Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Olivia and I'm a gender affirming voice teacher. And today is part two in my building blocks of vocal feminization series. If you haven't watched part one, I talk about kind of ways to prepare yourself for this journey, ways to care for your voice and ways to kind of build a habit so you stick to this in the long run. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the basics of vocal anatomy, talk about resonance, and how it affects the gender perception of the voice. I'm also gonna share some exercises um, for you to kind of start playing around with resonance. So resonance is a huge component of vocal feminization. You've probably heard about resonance before, um, but basically resonance is the sound quality or the tone or the color of the voice. Every space that a sound travels through has a frequency. And when sound travels through that space, the sound will take on the qualities of that frequency. So basically larger spaces have lower frequencies, smaller spaces have higher frequencies. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. I've got a bottle of water here. Obviously you can see how full it is. Um, and I'm gonna blow over the top and we're gonna listen to the pitch that we get when I blow over the top. Lovely. So lucky for you, I played flute for two years and I have an absolutely perfect embouchure. So, um, you know, not everyone can do that, okay? Okay, so we've heard this pitch. Ooh. Now let's pour some of the water out. Now let's see what pitch we get. Mm. So that pitch is lower because we have more space in the bottle. Less space in the bottle gave us a higher sound, a higher pitch, and more space gave us a lower pitch. So another great example of this um, is musical instruments. So if you know the difference between a cello and a violin, you know that a cello is much bigger than a violin. So the space for the, the strings to resonate in is bigger in a cello. So that means we're gonna have a lower frequency in that space of the cello body. And that means we're gonna get a darker, warmer sound. So dark is um, this quality that you might associate with, yeah, like a cello or a bass, like an upright bass, or if I'm talking kind of like this, that's a dark kind of sound, um, versus a violin. When you play a violin, those strings are vibrating in a much smaller space, higher frequencies in that smaller space, so we get a brighter sound. So a brighter sound quality in the voice might sound something like this. This is a little bit brighter. So how this applies to vocal feminization is that our vocal tract, which I'll talk more about, but is basically the, the space from the vocal folds to the lips, our vocal tract, depending on the space, can give us a brighter or darker sound if there's more space it's gonna be a lower frequency, darker sound. Less space, higher frequency, brighter sound. And basically, brighter sounds are gonna be more feminine perceived, darker sounds are going to be more masculine perceived. So I read in the voice book for trans and non-binary people by Matthew Mills and Gilly Stoneham um, that people who were assigned male at birth have vocal tracts that are 10 to 20% larger than those who were assigned female at birth. So that tells us that that space is gonna be a little bit bigger and give us a little bit of a darker sound quality. So our aim in terms of resonance um, for vocal feminization is to move toward that brighter sound quality and that means creating a smaller space, a smaller vocal tract. So I wanna talk through the different elements of the vocal tract so that you have a sense of what are the things you should become aware of and what are the possibilities in terms of changing the, the space. So the vocal tract is made up of the larynx, the pharynx, the oral cavity, and the nasal cavity. The larynx is a cartilage structure inside our throats 
right here, and it sits right on top of the trachea or the windpipe. So our breath comes up through our lungs straight into that larynx, and the vocal cords or vocal folds, you can use those kind of interchangeably, live inside of this cartilage structure. So if you put a hand here on your throat, um, you probably feel uh, your, your vocal cords vibrating. You can feel that vibration there. And if you swallow, you can feel that, that larynx move up and down. The larynx is very flexible and it's, it moves. You already know how to move it because you move it in day-to-day -day speech without thinking about it. So you could also yawn and feel your, your larynx move down. So that's creating more space. So basically, um, by changing the position of the larynx, we are changing the size of the vocal tract. If our larynx is lower, then the distance from our vocal cords to our lips is bigger. If our larynx is higher, the distance between those vocal cords and the lips is shorter. So that's gonna give us a brighter sound quality. So in general, we're moving toward a slightly higher larynx. So the pharynx is the throat up above the larynx, and this can also change positions. This can be more constricted or can be more open to give us a larger vocal tract or a smaller vocal tract. The pharynx can also kind of help uh, manipulate the larynx because when that constriction is happening, that's constricting and helping the larynx move up versus when it's more relaxed, the larynx is going to be further down. The oral cavity is the next part of the vocal tract. Um, and the tongue is the star of the show here. So when we're talking, when we're eating, our tongue is working really hard. It's a really strong muscle. Um, and it has a lot to do with how we form vowels. So if you notice like if you try to say some different vowel sounds, ah, e, oh, you can notice what your tongue position is like for each one of those vowels. So you're, you're manipulating these things without realizing how much you're doing it. So to give you a sense of how this oral cavity can be responsible for um, you know, creating that larger space or that smaller space, we can just try saying it a couple different vowels. So if we say, oh, so if you kind of like pretend like you have a tennis ball in your mouth, oh, oh, your tongue is gonna be really flat. And that's also affecting the position of your larynx. So that's creating this really dark sound. Versus if you say, e, e, you might notice that your tongue is lifting up higher and your larynx, if you put a hand on your larynx when you say that, e, e, your larynx is also lifting up as well. So the nasal cavity is the final kind of part of the vocal tract. And we have a little area up in the back roof of our mouth called the soft palate. And that soft palate is kind of the gateway into the nasal cavity. So when the soft palate is lowered, all that sound can travel through the nasal cavity. And when it's lifted, it's kind of the door is closed. We can't go, go through there. So if we try a nasal sound, um, we can try an M, M, N, N, and NG, M, any of those sounds, and then we plug our nose, you'll see what happens. So if we say M, mm, my sound stopped. N, N, stopped again. NG, mm, okay. So that means that I know all my sound is tra traveling through the nasal cavity, which tells me that soft palate is down. So in terms of tone quality, sometimes I hear from clients that they say, my, my voice sounds too nasally. There is something we can, can do about that. We can work on that sound quality if it is kind of nasal. So we can see that these pieces of the vocal tract, they all work together um, to create the, the sound quality of the voice. So when it comes to the vocal tract, obviously, um, as you're talking throughout the day, talking to different people or um, doing funny character voices, if you like to do stuff like that, uh, you are manipulating the sound quality of your voice. Everyone is, no matter who you are, I know you're going around town doing a little shift every once in a while. Um, it can depend on the day, can depend on how you're feeling, all those different things. 
So it's just a matter of paying attention to, oh, when I make that sound, this is happening with my larynx. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I try to do that intentionally, or this is happening with my tongue, or I'm feeling this type of sensation when I make that sound. Can I try to replicate that sensation and see what that's like? So it's really about building your awareness around the vocal tract and how the vocal tract movement affects the sound that you're getting. So we're gonna try a little exercise. This is not my own exercise. This is out there on the internet, but we're gonna do the big dog, little dog exercise. So this is going to help to bring awareness to your vocal tract and what things are moving and what result we get. So the first thing we're gonna do is be a big dog, okay? We're going to be a big dog on a hot Saturday afternoon in the park and you are going to be panting. So I'm a big dog. <sighs> So when I'm a big dog, my mouth is really open, my tongue is out, and I feel like I have to like close my eyes. I don't know, that's what I feel like, a, like a St. Bernard or something. So when I do that, now you've heard that sound quality when I send my breath through that space. Okay, now let's be a tiny dog, like a little terrier or something. Okay, no problem. So let's be a small dog. So you hear that difference in sound quality. So you hear that when I'm the St. Bernard, that space is bigger, the frequency is lower, and the sound is darker. Versus when I'm a little dog, I have let less space. That sound quality, uh, the frequency is, is higher because the space is smaller, and then I get a brighter sound quality. So basically what I'm doing in that exercise, you can bring your attention to what's happening in your vocal tract. So if you put a hand on your larynx and do your big dog, <sighs> sometimes it's helpful to just kind of do that to really relax, get that feeling. Your larynx is lowering, creating that space. I'm also noticing <sighs> my tongue is really flat at the bottom of my mouth and my mouth is really open wide, my lips are oh, open this way, right? Versus a tiny dog, put your hand back on your larynx. It's more like that E sound, the larynx is lifted, the tongue you might notice is lifting up, and my lips are spread this way, a little bit more wide. So you could play around with this. You could add some speech to being in those positions. So you could go, one, two, three. One, two, three. So again, I really like this exercise because it kind of, it demonstrates what is happening in a really exaggerated way. So when we, you know, get into working on resonance, we do want an easy feeling voice, but we are going to be making some, some changes in position. Um, so uh, when you're doing this, um, you're kind of moving toward that small dog position, remember to kind of check in and stay, stay relaxed. If you're feeling a little tense, maybe move around um, and explore making that kind of forward sound, small dog sound um, with different different words. And you can kind of play with it. Like maybe I'm a medium sized dog. What does that sound like? Or adjusting different pieces, whether that be larynx, tongue, lips, whatever, um, to kind of explore what kind of sounds you, you can make. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful and kind of helped to break down what, what resonance is and, and why we're working on it. Um, so the next video in the series is gonna be all about pitch, so don't miss that coming up next. And don't forget to follow along with my uh, two minute challenge. I'm posting a one minute video on YouTube Shorts here and also on TikTok every day that you can follow along with. You can go down in the description and get my um, practice tracker that you can um, follow along with and um, check off when you have practiced and watch the video. So. Yes, don't miss out on that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.